Hello, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is January 8th of 2017. And as I guess you can see on the screen, if you look down there, it is 3.44 a.m. Sunday morning. And I decided to make a very short video, and this is going to be uh, one of my story videos. And I don't think I'm going to, well... It's going to be one of my story videos, and it's going to be very short. Now, why did I decide just right now to do one? And this is the reason. Well, this is for everybody. There's a utility that I pay for. And it says that, uh, oh, Thursday, wait a minute. Uh... For subscribers, the best time for me to release a video is Thursday morning at 6 a.m. Let's see. For everybody, I thought it was 6. Oh, it is. Okay. For everybody, the best time is at 6 a.m. Sunday morning. So I thought, okay, I'm going to do a video. Uh... So I, I don't really have too much. Oh, that. Oh, I did want to say. Does anybody recognize in uh, Fort Lauderdale the shooting at the airport? A guy had a backpack on, had a laptop in, or maybe that's a notebook in his uh, backpack. Does anybody recognize what? kind of laptop or notebook that is. Be a good idea to buy one. Uh, so, my son has ordered a laptop computer from Dell. They had one on sale and it's about $800. It's supposed to be $300 off. He, I, I wish he would had, uh, he has a degree in computer and electronics, and he's been messing with computers a long time. He's, you know, grown. He's a grown man. I kind of wish he hadn't. The uh, they, Dell sent a flyer out. And he saw it, saw it was an i7 processor or whatever, and wanted it, so he has ordered it. I don't like laptops. I like desktops. I don't, I mean, I use a cell phone, but I don't, I don't want to watch any videos on a cell phone. I just use it if I have to for, uh, so, okay, anyway. Um, I'm doing these story videos uh, sometimes I'm making a you know a little video and then at the end of it or something I'm gonna throw in a story, but sometimes I'm just gonna do a story video and this one is gonna be short. But uh, there's a reason it's gonna be short and you'll see in a minute. But of course I'm gonna start rambling, so you may be here next week still watching this video. Um, A long time ago, back in the starting back in the 1970s, I worked. I started working hospital. I worked security a little bit before I started working. I always sort of say uh, I started working security in 1972. Actually, I was working security before 1972. In fact, for a year, I even had my own security patrol service. That's a story I need to tell, but put that aside. Uh, but so starting back before 1972, I worked for a little while full time for a couple security companies. And then when I started working hospital security for years, I worked part time. Uh, I was working full-time hospital security, and I would work part-time 
for these contract guard agencies. So uh, my mind is jumping to another point here. Hang on. Grab hold of the rails. Uh, back at sometime during between 1975 and 1982, I think towards maybe let's say 1980, the Kansas City, Missouri Board of Police Commissioners, their private commissioning unit, decided that they wanted to make some changes to how they licensed security people in Kansas City, Missouri. They wanted to change it so that uh, the police department would give half a day or a day or something of training and that all security officers uh, who were carrying firearms would have to be trained through at the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department range. Before that, for years and years, uh, there were a couple private range, good deal for these private ranges. Uh, you, you would go there and get certified there and then you would have that paper that you would take along with your other paperwork in order to get your private officer's commission. So the Board of Police Commissioners wanted to do two things. One, have some training that they would give and to have all the officers who were private officers who were going to be carrying weapons be licensed uh, or retrained or certified through, you know, once a year. Uh, or our commissions for a year at a time? I think so. Can't remember now. Uh, to go through them. So I uh, decided to go to the hearing. I. That might have been the only hearing I've ever gone, you know, or up to, up to that point I'd ever gone to. So I went to the hearing and it was filled with people. And uh, I didn't know that the hospital's Bob Ross, director of security at Trinity, where I worked, I didn't know that he was there. I didn't know that Don Bing, who was uh, director of security at Baptist Hospital, was there. They were together and they were representing hospital hospitals who didn't want a required police department training for their security people. Actually, I think it was the directors of security for the hospitals and their organization got, to, got together. I didn't know they were there. I didn't know they did not want, to, it didn't matter to me. I didn't know that they uh, didn't want it. Uh, so I went there and I didn't intend to speak or anything. I just wanted to see what it was like and what, and what the pr proposals were. And the proposals were, you know, Kansas City, Missouri, private officers commissioning unit would require all security officers to take a half day or whatever it was of being instructed by the police department. And then also, uh, if you wanted to carry a firearm, you would always go to the police department range and be certified there. Uh, so I was sitting, I just happened to be sitting and I, the first person to get up, you know, and there was the chief of police was there, Kansas City, Missouri police of chief, chief of police, police chief, board of police commissioners or the private officers commissioning people were there. The range, the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department range, shooting range, had two officers that worked there. And I don't know if both of them, one of them was there. And uh, so a guy gets up and he, he had a private patrol service like I used to have. I didn't know him, but he got up. And he said enough that, uh, and, and I knew that that's what, you know, that's what he did. And a lawyer was there. Now the lawyer was hired by, I didn't know at the time, but he was hired, he was getting money from the hospitals, 
security directors or whatever were paying paid him to be there to stop this, to stop the police department from having anything to do with training or license or firearms or qualifications. And Burns, Pinkerton, Wells Fargo, security, Wells Fargo, Wackenhut, I guess. I don't know. I don't know that Wackenhut, but they were also paying this lawyer to be there, every, all to stop any required training. Uh, so this guy got up, and I can't. Rem he got up, and he didn't say very much. You know, he the, he said uh, that he thought maybe it might be a good idea for the police to press something. And this lawyer got up. And I can't remember what the lawyer said to him, but the lawyer ripped into him. You know, sort of humiliated him and just ripped into him. And they, of course, the guy sat down. And then, uh, I'm Irish. I got up and uh, I said, uh, well, I think, I, I said, I can't remember exactly what I said, but I said something to the effect of, uh, I think it would be a very good idea for uh, the police department to have required training for security officers. Uh, I. My only concern is with the range part because uh, the Kansas City, Missouri police range has a couple thousand police officers that they have to certify every year. And there's about that n number also of armed private security officers in Kansas City, Missouri. And that seems to me like that would be a, a big burden. And uh, the chief of police said, oh, I have... Uh, you know, from our range, Sergeant so-and-so, and he assures me, and of course he stood up or whatever, that, that he, that they can handle or whatever. And I think that the range said a little bit, you know, yes, chief, we can, you know, we can take care of, take care of that. And uh, then I said, um, you know, I think the required training would be a very good idea because, uh, these contract guard agencies uh, really don't give their people, you know, any training at all. And this lawyer said, what's your name? And I think, you know, what's your name? And I said, you know, James Joseph Howard III. I think he, I think he said my address too. I think I gave my address, you know. <laughs> and, uh, he said, uh, what, what, what security company, you know, he says, oh, these security companies train their, you know, highly train their people. What security companies did you work, for, you know, what security companies did you work for? And I think in, in, when you go to law school, I think maybe the first class at law school they have is to tell lawyers how to make sure they get their money, you know, number one, get your money any way you can out of your clients. But I think maybe the second in, in law school, you know, maybe it's not one class 101, I think it's probably class 102 in there, I believe that a lawyer would never or should never ever ask anybody a question unless he knows what the answer is going to be. So, so he, you know, he said like, what companies did you work for, you know? And I said, uh, well, I think you're going to be sorry that you asked that question because the companies that I'm talking about are the very companies that are paying you to be here and to represent them and to defeat the uh, t required training for security officers. I said, those companies are Burns, Pinkerton, Wells Fargo, and I said, I can name others if you want me to. Do you want me to name your those, company, those companies? And uh, I said, I worked for them all, and I never received any training, 
ever. I said, let me correct that. Yes, uh, Wells Fargo showed me a slideshow when they first hired me and that lasted about two minutes. And it said, you know, when you're at the at a gate or whatever, if somebody uh, insists that they want to come in, you call your supervisor. I said, that's it. I said, would you like me to name the other companies that are paying you to be? And he said, no, that that no, that won't be necessary. And he sat down. Uh, after the, of course, they decided to go ahead. You know. Go ahead and I'm not saying I had anything to do with it, but the private officers commissioning unit decided yes, they put they put those things into effect, training for security officers and going to the, the police department range. After when the thing ended, a member of the uh, well, one my my boss was coming over uh, to see me and. Uh, a member of the, a female member of the Board of Private Officers Commissioning came over and she said, Mr. Howard, and by that time my boss was there. Uh, he wasn't going to, he wouldn't be, he, he knew me, he wasn't going to be upset. I don't think he was up, he didn't seem to be appear, you know, appear to be upset with me because I was going against, uh, that's, I went against a lot of uh, things. Uh, but, so he was there and you'd have to know how he, I mean, uh, I think I mentioned in a video about how I went to apply there to get a job and at Trinity Lutheran as a security officer. And when he interviewed me, he says, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And I, I went home and I told my wife, I hope I get hired there. But the, the director of security said something I really don't like. He said, it's not what you know. It's who you know. Oh, and when I had... Sorry, I didn't understand the question I heard. Echo, volume zero. Uh, oh, okay, when, when I applied at Trinity, you know, I went to the personnel department and the director of security came down from the sixth floor to take me up to interview me on the sixth floor. When we got on the elevator, there was Dr. D. Maria who was on the staff at Trinity and also on the staff at the hospital that I was working at, St. Joseph Hospital. And Dr. D. Maria said, uh, Jim, what are you doing here? I said, I'm trying to talk this, this man here into hiring me as, for a security position here. And Dr. D. Maria said, you better hire him. He is a good man. <laughs> and so I figured out later that that was it. I had the job before, I went, before the elevator got to the sixth floor because of the way Mr. Ross, so anyway, Mr. Ross is there standing there at the meeting. This lady comes over from the private officers commissioning unit. Mr. Howard, uh, we're, we may have an advisory committee. Uh, we're thinking about having an advisory committee with uh, several people on it who would help advise us on private officers and uh, that entire, and she said, I've got your name and address here. If we decide to go ahead with that, would you? <laughs> Would you be willing to be on the uh, the advisory committee? And I said, yes, ma'am. So I think uh, the director of security was like, oh my God, you know, because that's the type of thing he would want to be doing. Okay, this is going to be longer than I, I thought it was. And you're going to see why I thought it was going to be short. But I, oh, another lady came over and she headed, uh, she was, her husband was a police officer in, can't remember now, it was either Shawnee Mission, Kansas, or Mission, Kansas. And uh, they owned a private security for patrol service. And I had actually worked for them for a few months or something patrolling. And uh, so she came over and she said, oh, Jim. She said, well, you know, we didn't give you any training because we knew that you already had all sorts of training. You had listed that on, and I said, uh, whatever her name was, Mrs. I said, I, would, I wouldn't I would have named your, you know, uh, your company. And if, if the guy had pressed me, if that lawyer had pressed me for a whole bunch more names, I couldn't have come up with a whole bunch more names, but I just wanted enough to put him in his place, you know. 
And so I said I wouldn't have I wouldn't have mentioned your company's name. So now, the first one I mentioned when I mentioned Burns, Pinkerton, Wells Fargo. I actually only worked. I actually worked for Burns less than one day. Uh, I and that was the first sec security. Pl I had my wife and I had had a tropical fish shop for four years. We could see it just wasn't. It would be marginal. You know, we couldn't just keep doing that for forever. Uh, and because we just weren't making enough money. Uh, and so we had decided at, you know, in year three that we would give it one more year and it would have to improve by such and such a percentage. And I was keeping like daily or weekly. I could tell that we weren't going to make it. So I was, uh, doing the tropical fish shop, but I also started, uh, doing other things, selling printing. I, might, I think I might have mentioned that job. I love that job. Couldn't make any money with it. Couldn't. If I haven't told that story, I should tell it. I think I told it. So anyway, then I knew that I was going out selling these the print uh, business cards and that type of stuff to small businesses. And I love doing that. But when I went to them, I'd go and they'd, they'd have plywood up at a door or window and I put go in I, what happened somebody broke in you know smashed and broke in and whatever and this was I was seeing this at several different places that I went to and I thought you know security might be a business to get into but uh, I don't know anything about security so then when we sold the business to a minister, Church of God, Reverend Wright, was it? Or was that the reverend that I arrested at Trinity Lutheran Hospital? I can't remember. Anyway, he was a reverend, a minister. And we told him, uh, you will need to be open on Sunday. That's a big day. Are you going to be able to be open on Sunday? And he said, oh, yeah. So he bought the business, Siggy's Aquarium, and uh, his parishioners complained that he was working on Sunday and he wasn't doing church work on Sunday, so he had to be closed on Sundays. Uh, sometime I'll tell you about Siggy's Aquarium and the whole, it's kind of some interesting stuff there. But how did I get onto that? Oh, no. so the whole point of this thing was I was going to tell you, make it short and tell you about the day that I worked for Burns International Security Agency or Detective Agency. Uh, the William J. Burns International Detective Agency. My mind has drifted again. Sort of strange. Burns was one of the big early companies, private contracting company. Well, Burns, I mean, really early because uh, back when, when did he start his agency? Burns used to, in the Old West, they were the, secu the security services, police services, for banks, there'd be signs protected by the Burns Detective Agency at banks. Pinkerton uh, had the railroads and, you know, some other stuff. They had the railroads. So there'd be signs, you know, the railroad was protected by the Pinkerton Detective Agency. Uh, and they really needed those because there weren't, you know, the there wasn't law enforcement there you know there was no FBI there was don't think there was any well there was Texas Rangers a few of them a dozen or so for Texas uh, but so anyway I saw an ad in the paper for dispatcher for the 
Burns detective agency. So I went down and applied and they hired me immediately. And I thought, you know, I mean, this is before, well, it wasn't before computers, but I was expecting, you know, panels with lights and phones and a radio and all that kind of stuff. And it was, they, they said, okay, uh, this guy here is going to, they're, or they were going to show me, you know, there's a, there was a card table there with one telephone on it and a folding chair. And uh, they said, sit down and, okay. So then the phone rings. Uh, you know, I'm sick. I can't come into work today. Whatever they, they said, okay, well, you know, what you would do is you would have to, you know, look on this list here and find somebody to send and, and uh, whatever. And then, and then while I was, they said, okay, now look at this, look at this book here. They had a three ring note binder, you know, and, you know, you open it up and the William J. Burns Detective Agency offices in London and Moscow and all, you know, all this Washington, D.C. And oh, you know, you flip, I flipped the pages or whatever. And they, they said, okay, that's really important there. Really important. That's an important client, U.S. Steel. You ever hear of U.S. Steel? I mean, you know, now? Uh, and I looked at the, you know, if the corporate... I don't think they had jets in it. The corporate, uh, well, they had jets in, in the 1970s, but I'm not sure that many private, anyway, if if the U.S. Steel corporate aircraft lands, they will call, and we have to immediately send our best top trained people there to secure the perimeter and to guard the corporate aircraft and the executives for U.S. Steel, so they will call and, you know, and I thought, oh my God. Then the phone rings and it was a security officer and I think that he was at, and I don't think he was at home calling in, he was at Indian Springs Shopping Center, which is was, I think they closed, well they did close, in Kansas City, Kansas. I was in Kansas City, Missouri. And he was drunk and was at work or couldn't make it to work or something. And the people there, normally see if I'd have been trained as a dispatcher, I would have had to figure out who to send to replace this, you know. But, you know, they, uh, well, uh, we can't. So I think they might, they might have called a person or two, which normally I would have done if I'd have known what I was, you know, I was brand new. And, you know, it was like, uh, Joe, you know, uh, we need you to go to Indian Springs Shopping Center. Yeah, I know you've already just got home and you worked a 12-hour shift, but we really need you to, you know, need you to go. Uh, but, you know, we could, uh, uh, okay, okay. I call somebody in you know, another security, one of their security people. Yeah, well, yeah, I know that you worked the 12 hour shift and then we sent you out on another 12 hour shift and you just got home. But can you, you know, could you go and do this for uh, four hours and then we'll try to find somebody to get, we're not sure if they can get to really, but you know, or no. And then they, okay, uh, Jim. Uh, what we'll send you and come with us and they had a closet there with burns uniforms and uh, you know they put this had me put the shirt on it was like like this the pants I would I didn't need a rope to tie, you know to tie and they said hey, that'll that'll be okay we just need to get you to India and I said uh, I tell you what uh, I've been here long enough, uh, I've seen your operation, and uh, I quit, and I walked out, walked down the street and went to work for uh, Wells Fargo. So that was the story I was going to tell you, that uh, that was my, but I used that, I mean really, you, a person shouldn't say I, I used that like at the Board of Police Commissioners when I 
needed to come up with companies. By the way, as far as that training is concerned, I purchased when I was, I purchased Baker Industries owned Wells Fargo. I purchased stock, not, not a lot, a few, just a few shares of Baker Industries because they owned Wells Fargo. I owned, I purchased stock in Pinkerton. See, Burns, Pinkerton, and Wells Fargo. So I owned stock. So every, I would get their, their uh, report that they send to stockholders. Uh, and I remember getting these things, you know, glossy things with multi, you know, and it would show, it would show, let's say it's Wells Fargo. It would show a guy who was, oh man, impeccable. He he would he would make a marine look like like the marine was not dressed properly. And I remember this one picture that they I think on the cover of the thing or whatever, and they they showed this Wells Fargo officer looked fantastic, and there was behind him he was looked like he was in the office of lawyers or maybe maybe it was a. Pinkerton office or a Wells Fargo office someplace, but there were ma manuals, books there behind him that were tra training materials. There was a video, or I'm not sure we had video, there was videos stacked up there, training, training videos and other stuff, and it said, you know, our people are, you know, highly trained and we have X number of, uh, blah, 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 and I thought, what a fucking crock of shit. Uh, back around that time, the Rand Corporation, I haven't heard about them in a long time. Uh, Rand Corporation. They did a big study of, is an American nonprofit global policy think tank. They did a study on private security in the United States and came out with it. And they talked about, you know, 200% turnover rate, you know. So uh, what's kind of strange is Burns and Pinkerton both, and maybe some others, were purchased by, they're not American anymore. They were purchased by, I think, one UK company, I believe. So one company in United Kingdom owns Burns and Pinkerton. They are stealing our Wild West history. Uh, I didn't know that until I looked right here that uh, William John, William Burns, uh, 1861 to 1932 was known as America's, okay, we're, maybe that's why they purchased, known as America's Sherlock Holmes, is famous for having conducted a private investigation clearing Leo Frank of the murder of Mary Fagan, that was in Atlanta, Georgia, and for serving as director of the Bureau of Investigation which was the predecessor to, predecessor to, which was before the FBI from August 22nd, 1921 to May 10th of 1924. As a young man, he performed as a Secret Service agent and he parlayed his reputation into the William J. Burns International Detective Agency. now a part of the security security service of the USA Swedish it's a Swedish company okay area headquarters is in North America Europe South Africa or South South America Asia and Africa Headquarters is in Stockholm, Sweden. Um, so that's my story. So what I was going to tell you was that one day at Burns, and then I, 
I, I have uh, roamed mentally all over, even to Sweden. We have gone everywhere. But I am going to do, maybe I think my next story is going to be about when when I worked for Radio Shack. I got hired in by Radio Shack to be a manager. Of course, they hired me in as a manager trainee. And I'm uh, going to tell you about that story. Thank you very much for watching. And now I'm going to get this online. I'm going to uh, I won't schedule it for 6 a.m. I'll just go ahead and make it now. But this is, this utility that I have tells me that uh, the best time, whoops, I closed that, didn't I? By the way, you see up here, 2,004 subscribers. I made it to 2,000 subscribers, but all five of you have to do is... Uh, and people do cancel from time. You know, I picked up in the last 28 days 31 subscribers, but I'm sure I lost. Uh, I'm sure I lost subscribers too. Let's see if this shows that. Loading analysis. Subscribers, last 28 days, 31. There you go. Subscribers gained, I gained in the last 28 days, I, I, I gained 57 subscribers, but I lost 26. So that's why it took me, see, YouTube started in 2005, and I started with them in 2005. I think that's 11 years. It took me 11 years to get 2,000 subscribers. I think there are people who put videos on here and they get 2,000 subscribers in a day. Anyway, do not unsubscribe. I'm watching. Do not unsubscribe. I'll get you. Thank you very much for watching.